Here you can see a fourth quadrant angle. The measure of the angle isn't given, but it is a negative angle that's located in the fourth quadrant. And a point on the terminal side of the angle is given. That point is the square root of 19, negative 9. This is enough information to determine the value of the six trig functions at that angle. To find the value of these trig functions, you'll need to know the trig ratios in terms of x, y, and r. And you can be reminded of them by looking in this table. And you can see that all of these ratios are in terms of x, y, and r, some combination of x, y, and r. So what this problem boils down to is identifying the values for x, y, and r for this angle. In this case, the value of x is the square root of 19. I know that. That's the x-coordinate of a point on the terminal side of the angle. And the y-coordinate is negative 9. I know that. All that's missing is the value of r, which is the distance from the origin to the point. Once you determine the value of r, you can write the value of all six trig functions. Let's do that now. So again, this problem boils down to finding the value of x, y, and r. And we know that the x-coordinate of a point on the terminal side of the angle is the square root of 19. The y-coordinate of a point on the terminal side of the angle is negative 9. And r, although we don't know it, we do know that it is the distance from the origin to that point. To find that, there are a couple ways you could find that, but I believe the easiest way would be to use the Pythagorean theorem. Use the Pythagorean theorem. Create a right triangle out of the situation and realize that one of the legs is the square root of 19. The length of the other leg is 9. x squared plus y squared could be thought of as the square root of 19 squared plus positive or negative 9 squared equals r squared. The square root of 19 squared is exactly 19. Negative 9 squared or 9 squared is 81. And that sum is 100. It's pretty simple to think of taking the square root of both sides in this case and realizing that r is equal to 10. We, we don't have to include a plus or minus in front of this square root of 100 because r represents a distance and a negative number doesn't make sense in this context. So r is 10. Once I know the values of x, y, and r, finding the values of the six trig functions is going to be very easy. First, the sine y over r. The sine y over r is a rational number. It's negative 9 tenths. The negative sign is important. The cosine x over r is going to be irrational. It's the square root of 19 over 10. The tangent y over x is going to require a little bit more work to simplify because y over x would be negative 9 over the square root of 19. But it's best to express fractions with a rational denominator. And this could be rationalized by multiplying the numerator and denominator by the square root of 19, which I'll do, to present the simplest form for the answer for the tangent of this angle, negative 9 times the square root of 19 over 19. The cotangent x over y is the square root of 19 over 9, negative. It's best to write that negative sign just in front of the entire fraction instead of in front of just the numerator or just the denominator. The cotangent of this angle is negative, the square root of 19 over 9. The secant r over x will also require a little bit of simplification. r over x is 10 over the square root of 19. This can be rationalized, again, by multiplying the numerator and denominator by the square root of 19, which yields 10 root 19 over 19. The secant, like the cosine, is positive for this angle. The other four trig functions will all be negative, including the cosecant, r over y, which is negative 10 ninths. The value of r is 10. The value of y is negative 9. I'll state the cosecant as negative 10 ninths. Here we can see the value of all six trig functions for the angle that has a terminal side with a point square root of 19, negative 9.